So ladies and gentlemen, let's get down to numbers and join me in welcoming Guillaume. Hello. Thank you, thank you everyone. So yeah, um, my name is Guillaume, uh, Senior Account Executive at Sleek. Um, and let's, uh, let's get started. All right, so today we, I'm going to talk to you about legal structure and cross-border taxes, so it's not the sexiest topic, especially after lunch. So I'm going to try to keep it short and entertaining, so you don't fall asleep, but if you have any question, you can later come down to our booth and we'll be happy to answer any of them. So section one, um, let's focus on first starting and managing your business in Singapore. What do you need to start your business in Singapore? Very simple, it's very easy. You need to have at least one shareholder. It can be a corporate, it can be an individual. Uh, a company can be 100% foreignly owned in Singapore, so that's quite good for uh, foreigners. You need to have at least $1 capital. Uh, another requirement is you need to have a local company secretary, a local resident director, and an address in Singapore. So those are the five requirements you need to uh, get started in Singapore and register your business. What are the other things you, you need to consider? Uh, obviously, you will need to have a name for your company, so that's something you need to uh, take that into account. Uh, you will need to declare an activity code, so uh, for you, most likely, will be under the online marketplaces, and depending on the goods you sell, you can select uh, what's the most convenient for you. Um, good question, do you need a license or a permit? Uh, most likely, no, sometimes, yes, you need to have an import and export license. If you sell uh, liquors as well, that's something you, you need to, uh, to know. Um, you might need insurance uh, for consumer liability. Uh, and all of those questions is something you need to consider. Uh, we're happy to, um, to guide you through it. So introducing Sleek, uh, what am I speaking to you right now? Uh, basically, we do provide uh, online incorporation and uh, managing all your accounts very simply through an online platform. Because you're all digital seller, digital adept, uh, it's very easy for you to get started today. Um, the target when what we'd want to achieve is we want you to work faster, do simpler, and save money because we provide all of uh, services through only one platform, so it's very easy and convenient for you to do so. Now, part two, um, keeping your business compliant. So how do you stay compliant in Singapore? Um, Singapore entities must adhere to uh, reporting standards, and there's two legal entities you need to comply with, ACRA and IRAS. So ACRA is the company regulatory of Singapore, so that's where your business is registered. Uh, IRAS is the tax office. And of course, sadly, if you don't comply to those entities, you will face fine. But don't worry, we're here to help you. Um, all the reporting deadlines for your companies are set up by your end of financial year. So what does that look like? So basically, you will have a... Um, your financial year, so you will register your company, and you have 12 months where you basically don't need to do pretty much anything. You just need to get started, move on your business, and at the end of those 12 months, uh, that's where everything needs to, uh, to be done. Um, right here, the financial year end is set up on the 30th of December, but just to know, uh, in Singapore, you, any month end can be a financial year end. So this can be uh, triggered. Um, as I mentioned, Two legal entities on the bottom part of the of the graph, you can see ACRA, who's the company regulator, and you have mandatory filings to make, which are the annual general uh, meeting of your company, and you also need to file in your annual return. Now, moving on to the taxes. So, for IRAS, the Tax Office of Singapore, um, you will need to uh, to perform your estimated chargeable income. You will need also to do your unaudited financial statement. Just keep in mind that in Singapore, you don't need to have any financial audit until you reach 10 million revenue. So that's something that is pretty convenient. It will, uh, at least for the first few years, and I hope you reach 10 million revenue quite fast, but at least for the first few years, you won't have to do any financial audit. And at the end of the year after, almost, you need to file in your corporate tax return. So now those are very boring accounting forms. Um, same for ACRA, it is, um, you need to have a company uh, regulator. So that's what something will help you with, and the earlier you get started, at least you don't have to focus onto any of this, uh, and you, you, are, you are free of mind. Now what happens if you don't do that, if you don't do any filings? Uh, what happens, maybe you already started an entity in Singapore, and you haven't covered any, any of those topics yet. So yes, sadly, you, are, you would have fines, but two things. So you can apply always for an extension of time, so that's something you, you can facilitate. And of course, if your company has been registered and you haven't filed anything yet, we are also happy to help you to get back on track and to file in the late years. Of course, there will be some fines you need to pay, but you can still get your company back and running and up to date. Now, 
Something a bit more interesting for you, what are the tax implications for Singapore-based sellers selling on Amazon.com, so on the US platform? Uh, the, this, this part is mostly uh, uh, frequently asked questions you might have, so it's very self-explanatory, uh, self and we will try to answer all of the questions you, you already have. So, if I, if I am sell selling any physical goods to inter international customers on Amazon.com, will I be taxed in Singapore if I'm an individual taxpayer? The answer is no. So, Overseas income received in Singapore by an individual is not taxable and doesn't need to be declared as your income tax return. So the question is, if you have a company in Singapore, does that need to be declared? The answer is yes. So since this will be under your company, everything that goes to your company's bank account is taxable in Singapore on the profits only. So do keep in mind that not only the, re the revenue is taxed, it's uh, the profit. So if your company is not making any profits, you won't have any tax. Uh, of course, I wish you to have a lot of profit, and then you can manage with your expenses and uh, optimize your tax. Now, another question is, since, you, since you're, you're selling through an U.S. platform, what about the U.S. taxation? U.S. taxation is known to be quite com complex, quite tricky, and uh, of course, the liability for the U.S. is not something you want to play with. Um, so, as a non-U.S. taxpayer, if I'm selling any taxable good in the U.S., do I have to declare my taxes there? So the answer is no again. Amazon.com is, uh, is great because they will assist you to, f to fill up the form W-8, that will be the, which is basically your tax exemption for the US. Uh, of, of course, sorry to, go, to come back, um, as it is le legally uh, legal implication, we must, they might ask, might ask for any proof of identification for you, just to be sure that you, you are well registered. So now, GST implication for Singapore-based sellers selling on Amazon.com. So GST is the goods and service tax in Singapore. It's the equivalent of the value-added taxes in uh, most countries. Um, just keep in mind that the GST is uh, for companies. You don't need to mandatorily register to GST unless you reach one million revenue where it's mandatory. If you want to voluntary, voluntarily uh, register to GST, that's also something we can do. Um, so how should I charge GST for goods sold on Amazon.com? Great question. So for goods exported from Singapore to a location internationally, you don't need to charge any GST because it goes offshore internationally. You don't have to, do to, pay G to charge GST. However, you need to, to keep all the records for at least five years. So be sure when you, when you do your bill of lading, your BR, your export certificate, you keep that or you transfer that to your accountant because you need to keep the records for five years. So another question, I'm sure there's lots of dropshippers in, uh, in this room. Uh, so dropshipping, since nothing comes to Singapore, you don't need to pay GST nor charge GST. Now, for GST implication, in case you buy things from Amazon for, for you to resell locally, so how does it work? So until, uh, until the 1st of January 2023, uh, you are only required to pay GST for goods over 400 US do uh, Singapore dollars uh, CIF. However, sadly, this is going to change on the 1st of January 2023. Um, with effect, you will have to pay GST for any, uh, for any goods you receive in Singapore. Uh, GST will, uh, will be 8% by, by then, effectively on the 1st of January. Now, if you are GST registered, this will be part of the, of the GST you can, uh, you can declare and report. As a GST registered business in Singapore, can I recover GST incurred on import of goods? Yes, so that's what I mentioned. You, you, can, um, you can report the GST, but you will need to have a special import permit to support your claim to, to prove that you have imported the, the goods. If you are not GST registered business, import GST is for you to pay and it's part of your, uh, of your expenses. So this is something you will have to, um, to cover as a business. Now, Essential tax information as a business for e-commerce uh, businesses like you. Um, so the income you derive is considered taxable in, in Singapore if the business operations supporting the online activities are based in Singapore. So let's get an example. If you're, if you're an online sales made through Amazon US, 
and the key activities for earning the income uh, all be performed in Singapore. So if you if you identify the product, if you repack it in Singapore and everything, then the sale of income through Amazon.com in the US will be considered as taxable in Singapore because uh, you have made some operations in Singapore. Now. Another thing to, good to mention um, is about the records. For tax reporting purposes, you are to, in the event of an audit, in the event you uh, IRAS come back to you, you will need to um, you will need to present all the receipts you, you have, all the invoices. So that's why it's always good to keep your registers, your listings, uh, and all of that for at least five years. In the event you're not able to provide uh, any proof uh, to um, to the tax office, you, your taxes might be adjusted upwards. So instead of being taxed on the profits, you will sadly be taxed on the revenue itself. So now tax tip for e-commerce business owners and individuals, another, another thing. So if you are a Singaporean or if you have um, a, a company in Singapore, luckily Singapore is a great place to start a business. It's very easy, uh, but you and you will have some tax relief. So for the first three years, typically you would have some uh, better tax rates. Um, and so we're happy to, uh, to help you understand what, which are these uh, tax optimization you, you can do. And you can always visit us at Booth 3 on the, at the hall. Now, tax de deductible, so everything that is considered as a business expense um, is, consider, is deductible from your taxation. So typically, typically uh, let's say you need a, you, everybody needs a laptop today to, to work, so you purchase a laptop. This is considered as a business expense, and this can be de de deducted from your, your company's uh, taxation. So just make sure that everything that you deduct is, is, has a link to your business. So typically, if you need to attend one of these com conferences and you need to take a taxi to go there, this is a business expense because you're legitimately going to this, comp to this event for your business, to grow your business and everything. So do keep in mind that a lot of it can be... Um, can be uh, declared as expenses, and you can uh, make sure that what you pay as taxes is really what you made as a, uh, on the money. Uh, expenses are revenue and not capital uh, in nature. So now this is the moment you need to take out your phones because um, you get $200 off on all our, our accounting package today with Sleek. Um, so basically, we are happy to... Uh, help you incorporate the business in Singapore and to keep it compliant at all times. So you don't need to worry about it. Uh, we will do also all the monthly bookkeeping for you. So that's great in case you don't want to, uh, to worry too much about declaring your taxes and everything. And luckily for you, uh, for you we can uh, get $200 off today. Uh, so it's, thank you if, you if you can scan that. Last thing, if you... We have a booth here, so there's no Q&A session uh, for us today because you can come directly to speak to us at our booth. So we're happy to answer all the questions you would have, whether it's about incorporation, whether it's about taxation, and we are happy to help you in your seller journey. Thank you so much, everybody.